Hello and welcome to this food for thought video. I'm referring to it as a food for thought because it's not quite a quick tip, it's not quite a tutorial, it's a little bit of a mashup of the two. And what I'm going to be looking at is really is uh, taking CV and, and automating devices if they're a, a rack extension or a VST. But I'm just going to look at that a slightly different way. Now, if we say go and look at a, a, a real, I want to say a full blown, but a, a real nice rack extension, which would be the VK2, and we've, if we go and look at the back of that as a rack, it's absolutely splendid. We've got all these CV ins and out, and obviously with this, this particular rack extension, you can, it's, it's all about wiring itself up to itself, because it's quite a modular rack. But we obviously have a number of rack extensions which don't have any CVs on their back. Um, if I go and look at one of my favorite IDT devices, say for instance, um, it happens to be Craft, Obviously, we've, apart from the note and gate, there's no other sort of CV data which we can get into it. So we can sl slap that straight into a combinator, no problem at all. Um, what that gives us is four CV in, so we can manipulate these, and obviously we can make that um, unipolar or not. Uh, we've got four rotaries which we can take control of, again, to get another four CV signals in. And we don't forget the mod and pitch inputs up here. So that gives us like a total of 10. No, we can take a total of 10 CVs in and to control it. Um, just a very quick tip, if I was actually going to use the mod and pitch wheel, say, uh, to, to manipulate CV data or, you know, or to manipulate other controls, I would make sure I would actually turn off the performance coming from the pitch so it's not going to send the pitch wheel down into the device in question. It's going to stop it and then obviously what we can do is we can then just wire it up here so oh, there's a pitch bend let's go and wire that up to oh, there's a pad that'd be quite a good one to wire it up to so if i now move my pitch wheel on my controller there it is moving up and down and obviously there it is moving up and down on the pan okay nothing magical there at all um but it's just a, just a reminder that you can have actually obviously up to 10 cv stuff device uh, cvs coming in to these devices but as i said we're going to be looking at things slightly differently and obviously what we've got here is a good old uh, respire and when we look at the back it's absolutely plain Jane isn't it so uh, this time I'm not going to put it into a combinator um, I've got a sound so let's have a quick listen to uh, what we've got going on here okay nothing special nothing great um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold down just one key and let's see what happens. And as you can clearly, clearly see, we've got so much automation going on inside this device. Um, I think, in fact, I've, I think I have automated up to about 40 controls. So we're not stuck with just the 10 which is going on with, um, say, a combinator, we can manipulate it further. Um, and how are we doing this? Well, I'm not doing anything clever, clever at all, really. I've just got, obviously, an ammo here, which is fine off, and I'm using that to create my LFOs. Uh, I'm not manipulating the signals too, too much. Uh, I say this is purely a test. But it's the good old EMI again, so I've got plenty of videos out there if you don't know about the EMI and how to set the EMI up to a loopback um, and come back in as a service controller. Um, it says something which is worth setting up because you know you can have a real lot of fun with this sort of setup. We can also use VSTs you know, to use this method, so I'm going to very, very, very quickly set one up. Um, I happen to have a new VST, which is subroom based. So if you've got the Explorer 4, you can obviously go and download this free of charge. And all I'm going to do is going to manipulate this one control. So to manipulate control, obviously you need to click on the remote like you normally would do. We're going to do a, a remote override. And in my case, that happens to be my surface controller. And I want to manipulate it with CC50. Um, and that should be us up and running. So if I just go and enable my MIDI port now, we can see we're sending data and we're manipulating that. And it's, it's that straightforward. And obviously I can go through each and every single control I want to. 
and it's exactly the same with a rack extension really. There is a bit of a difference with a rack extension and I will just go over that as well. So let me just close this off because we don't need that. Uh, one of the nice things about doing it with a rack extension, say something like um, with a Respire. How do I get to manipulate these controls here? Because obviously if I try and right click on here, it doesn't come up. You know, we've got the right click and we can go edit over, remote override. And obviously I can come in and I can actually select whatever I want. But then how am I actually selecting these ones? We have this lovely little option up here called Remote Override Edit Mode. And once we're in this mode, obviously we can get to all these extra controls which are hidden away. Um, it's also going to show controls which, you know, not even on top. So if I go into this one here, so it's talking about slot 8. So it's more than likely on, on the matrix slot 8 that is. And target 4. So with like this note, one's going to be for oscillator one, or there's one that happens to be three, that could be two, and that's four. So I don't actually have to go into the different pages. I can actually start edit remote overriding from this screen here. So it's just a handy little screen to remember that this is how I can get to extra controls. So if I actually uh, turn it back on again, and in fact, how, what I'm doing is, this is my MIDI loop back, and I'm, I'm basically just muting and unmuting to stop and start the controls. And before I actually do start them up, this is something which is worth <laughs> a bit of food for thought here, is obviously I've got this sound. And I might say to myself, oh, I, I really like that sound. So I can just click on save, obviously, and, and if I want to, I can obviously then save it and all the rest of it. Um, and then what I can do is I can obviously then go back to my, my MIDI controller again. Sorry, there we are. I can unmute it, mute it again. And there's a different sound. And I say, oh yeah, I like that. So I can save that sound. And again, we can just let the controls go off. Do I like that sound? And so on and so forth. So you can just keep going through and let these manipulate. And, and just and I can just keep saving them and saving them, and saving them, and use them for later. Now there is a, another big thing what we can uh, use this automation data for and that is we can record this is that straightforward we can just hit record and there we go we got it recording away and I'm actually going to show uh, one other thing uh, now we're doing the recording is obviously under preferences we've got this automation level cleanup as you can see I've got it set to normal there I could sell it to minimum Let me just move this to one side so I would just hit record again Let's stop that. And there's also a maximum cleanup level. To be honest, I usually have it between minimum and normal. It depends really what I'm actually recording. Let's stop that. So if we go and choose, uh, that looks like a nice little LFO there. Sorry, a side way, should I say, going on. So let's just quickly join that clip. And we're going to double click on that one. And you can see the difference. So it tries, this is like normal. It's sort of got a little bit of, it's not really, really want to call it a curve, but you know, it's trying to give it that kind of curve data. Obviously on, on uh, when it's got minimum cleanup, it really does give it real sort of curvy look. And well, on maximum, <laughs> what it's really done there is, is uh, turned it into a triangle. So we've gone from a sine wave into a triangle. And it's, and you can tell, you know, see it's taken all the points out between. So it's just looked at the minimum and the maximum and that's what it's set. So just bear that in mind because obviously you can use that again, food for thought, you know, you can use that to manipulate your, your CV signal. Okay, so as I said, this is all about food for thought video. So hopefully I've given you some ideas which you might go off and try and uh, hopefully you found this semi useful and uh, that is around about it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Happy CVing.